guys, uh, I thought I'd follow up with another technical video showing this uh, Arduino water control system. Uh, I showed a video before, um, notably my shaky video, and, uh, and since I've gotten tons of questions uh, in regards to its wiring and mechanical components chosen and, and basically the general scheme of the, the uh, system and what its purpose is, and I thought I'd follow up with an in, in-depth technical video explaining and, and answering all these questions in one shot. Uh, and I'm certainly welcome to follow up questions afterwards. I um, I chose this as my first Arduino project, although I had, had toyed with it for programming and, and everything else and blinking LED and all that. I certainly didn't dive into this project as the first uh, thing that I've uh, you know written to the Arduino uh, Atmel chip. But uh, this was certainly a big project uh, and also a fun one and a, and a difficult and challenging one uh, due to uh, some of the problems I had with it. Uh, prim primarily the AC solenoids, which were uh, tough, and um, I have some remedies, and I'll talk about that and some of the difficulties and, and how I ended up with the system, uh, and we'll get started. Okay, so uh, here's an interior shot, and although, unfortunately, I, I don't know why, but I hadn't taken any really good high-res photos of this uh, project, uh, but these are just two iPad photos. Um, this shows the inside of the box. It's uh, it's a Snyder Electric um exterior rated box it's uh, water resistant I'd say uh, but I did keep everything with cable glands and everything so you could probably pour water on this thing and have no problem it was it was meant to be in an outside environment uh, and that's why I went with this type of box uh, lightweight composite it's not a metal box it's really nice to work with for drilling and everything else uh, I also went with a composite back plate it's just a, a actually a plastic one a PVC and um, and that's what I mounted all my components on so I'll start with the door harness. These are just um, pilot lights, which I'll show you in another picture, and uh, a selector switch. And each one is for the uh, the state of uh, you know what's being called. And the selector switch is just a manual override for the pump. If you ever wanted just to turn the pump on manually, uh, and I just wanted to have that functionality, and that's why I did it. On the back plate, uh, and that's where this door harness wiring goes down to. Uh, is the uh, AC transformer uh, for the 24 volt AC solenoid valves, um, which is uh, you know an HVAC typical uh, uh, transformer. Uh, but coming into the box, uh, I have single phase 120 volt AC, uh, which you can see this gland in here with Euro colored wiring. Uh, into my terminal bus, uh, this is line, uh, neutral, and ground. Uh, so I did bring in ground for the box. Uh, I have a single pull circuit breaker for the entire box so I can isolate it and shut it off and also give moderate protection. This is an ABB circuit breaker. Um, and then I'm coming into uh, here my contactor. This is for uh, I'm controlling with a relay, but uh, a relay is running this coil uh, for the larger load of the water pump. Uh, pretty pretty good size pump. And then I have my uh, a couple field terminals. Uh, And then I have these fuel terminals here uh, for my various connections for float valve uh, sensors and uh, for controlling uh, the pump is coming right off the, the contactor there, uh, right off of this uh, three-tiered motor terminal. Uh, up here I have my um, uh, power supply. This is my DC power supply. This is just a small, slim uh, DC power supply for the Arduino, which is a 12V DC. It's also for the relays. Uh, and these are fuse terminals, various fuse terminals in here for protection uh, for each of the loads. And these are Finder relays that I'm using. I The tough thing with the Arduino is it's not like a PLC where you can directly drive loads from the outputs of the um, the controller. And uh, so you, you've got to respect the limits and the thresholds of the Arduino. So I'm coming off the Arduino to a, a logic level uh, relay board, which is a, a sane smart relay board. It's got four uh, cube relay, mechanical relays. And those are driving larger uh, Finder relays, which are very easily replaceable. You can just pop this black lever and um, and, and pop these these uh, relays out if you if you damage them or, or for any you know field replacement of any kind. Very easy to replace. I didn't want to have to replace this board because uh, it's uh, threaded and tabbed into the back plate. And uh, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell of the inside of the box. And I'm gonna sh I'm not gonna show you the uh, outside of the box and. Uh, show you how that works on, in the outside system. Um, let me just grab that picture here. The outside of the box, uh, again, this, this is a, a waterproof, water-resistant box. I use that term loosely. Um, 
we've got cable glands coming in here. We got our power in. We've got our uh, various uh, float sensors, our two float sensors, and we've got our manual uh, override switch for the pump. Uh, those all come in. Obviously, feel this is just for me testing on the bench. Uh, the outside of the box, we've got a nice little panel plate. It's all in Portuguese. Uh, eu falo português, and this was located in Brazil, and that's why I did it that way. Uh, these are uh, um, actually I should should have mentioned before. These are 12 volt DC uh, uh, pilot lights, which are running off that 12 volt DC power supply as you may wonder. Um, and these indicate uh, what's being called as well as the pump one comes on when it's being called. Uh, although uh, when you just turn on the manual override, just the pump light comes on. Uh, and that's basically it for the outside of the box. I can show you the, the system when where it's going. Uh, this is basically the mechanics of the system uh, and, and the problem I was faced with. Um, normally, normally when you have a water tank in this situation, you have one water tank with one float sensor and that cuts and, and makes power uh, to the motor, to the pump motor uh, in the water tank, uh, which is in this case about 20 meters below the earth. And, uh, and normally you're just cutting and breaking uh, one single wire, uh, but in this case I've got two tanks and uh, two independent water uh, float switches uh, and one pump and one well. So the difficult task was to have to have some logic to, to control that. Um, this, uh, although it's a natural water well, uh, it has a limited amount of um, supply without starving it. So you have to have some kind of logic that doesn't uh, allow more than one um, function to be working at the same time. I don't want one, both of these running at the same time. Just like I don't want somebody uh, opening up um, the valve manually and uh, running water for a hose or something, uh, and then just uh, you know draining this this well so I can't fill the stuff, um, domestic stuff for the house, which is more important uh, than everything else. Uh, so that was where I logic in, and that's where it came up with the Arduino. Uh, as the as a key as a center part of this because I can't just wire this manually with relays uh, there has to be some kind of logic because of the restrictions of the system uh, I wanted to go with a PLC but it was very high cost and I tried to use the Arduino um, Uno as a low cost solution uh, for creating that logic or for storing that logic and controlling it um, so basically what's going on is and I'll show you a picture this is just um, this is one of the water tanks. It's a, just a, a fiberglass tank uh, where you've got a feed in, and then you've got um, just an, an exit out in case it overflows. Very simple, uh, rude and crude. Uh, that's just one of them. And here's what this box is basically replacing, which is just manual control. It's just a switch and a breaker to to switch on and off, and you've got to just switch stuff manually. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I'll get into the schematic now, and I think I'll show you here. Is um, this, I'm in AutoCAD actually. And this is actually this is the mechanical view, uh, just a review again of what's going on in the box. I did design it in AutoCAD first to make sure I could fit everything. It was a tight fit. Um, here's the Arduino Uno in the middle, that Sane Smart relay board, a transformer. There's my DC power supply and my fuse bus here, and some of my relays, uh, my AC contactor for the pump. Uh, my circuit breaker for main isolation and my AC bus line in and then some of my various field terminals uh, for this job and then obviously the front of the box where I've got the status of it um, and that's obviously changed that's where it ended up like that uh, so I'll show you um, how this thing is wired up and in schematic and of course later I'm going to publish these um, to PDF and, and how I offer my so I haven't decided yet um, my CNC uh, controller that I've built. I actually sell the plans for that. Uh, I'll see how I end up with this. This is a little bit more simplified schematic, uh, although I did have a lot of time into it, um, but uh, I'll just show a review of it for now and how I've got it set up. So basically you've got power coming in uh, to your main breaker. Uh, you're coming into your AC bus and you're feeding your AC consumers. Um, uh, you know, you're uh, hitting a, a contactor uh, for your water pump and this water con uh, this contactor uh, is being controlled by uh, one of the Fender relays, one of those slim interface relays. Uh, up top we've got some of our solenoid lights. Uh, these are all uh, pilot light uh, symbols uh, as well as uh, a manual selector switch. Primary uh, control transformer right here for the uh, solenoid valves um, and they're all fuse protected of course inbound. Uh, DC power supply which is feeding uh, our relays, the relay board, the Arduino, as well as all the pilot lights that are all 12 volt DC as well. And uh, here's a quick schematic of the Arduino Uno microcontroller. Um, 
I've got their power in, fuse protected power, power in. I'm showing the plug, but I didn't use it. I just use manual wires on the screw terminals. And as far as the IO, I'm just showing it all on one side. I realize it goes on all, both sides of the, the header. This is just for more for clarity. Uh, but I basically have got uh, pins 9, 8, and 7, and 6 running to the input of the uh, Sane Smart board, uh, which uh, switch those relays. Uh, and then I'm also carrying my 5 volt auxiliary output uh, with the ground over to the Sane Smart board to power the board up itself. Uh, on the other side of the board, I'm running to the relays for each of these um, uh, normally open contacts, uh, although there are normally closed for each set, um, just using normally open contacts. Uh, one is for the pilot light, um, so I'm, I'm switching the relay, which then turns on um, uh, the Finder relay, uh, which turns on the solenoid valve, but I've also got to drive that pilot light, so I'm using an, an auxiliary or, or, or the second set of contacts, as there's two sets of uh, normally open and two sets of normally closed contacts on that board. It's actually a, a really tight package that has a lot to it um, as far as control. So I'm driving the pilot light, which tells you that the solenoid's open. A little bit more upstream, it's kind of a dumb uh, pilot light, but um, it's a very simple box, and that's, I didn't want to go downstream with, with that showing that. Uh, here are the water float switches, which um, are, are literally just micro switches that either roll up or down with a little ball that closes them. Uh, just two wire switches, and then my selector switch, which is uh, illuminated, uh, which uh, is also another 12-volt consumer uh, DC. Uh, so I'm switching it on, and as I'm switching it on, I'm also looping through um, a little LED on the, on the switch itself to show that it's on. Um, also, uh, here is the here are the uh, Fender relays uh, that are driving the full load of a solenoid valve, uh, and these are driven. Um, uh, their coil is driven by the Sane Smart uh, board, um, and these guys. Uh, drive the, the full um, solenoid across their contacts, which is AC, but I'm controlling it with the DC coil. And these are the, uh, the three solenoid valves. And that's pretty much it inside the box. Very simple schematic. Uh, I'm also just going to pop open the uh, Arduino app, the ID, and, and show you some of the code I've got going on. Um, let me just pull up my sketch. I believe this is my latest version, and I'll publish this code for sure because uh, I got a lot of help, and I've already published this on the Arduino forums anyways. Uh, basically, what I've got going on is uh, I've got to declare the digital inputs, the outputs, and some delay times, just some constant integers, um, the float switches, the manual switches, uh, the relays, um, and then also the delay time for uh, debouncing the, the switches themselves so I don't get any false triggers, uh, and, uh, and then for the manual switch as well. And then I'm uh, setting up the uh, pin mode for what I'm designating each individual Arduino pin for um, and their functions. So here you got S1 through S4 as an actual input. And the outputs are K1 through K4, which is just a relay numbering, uh, as well as I'm, I'm writing the digital 1, 2, 3, and 4 high to, to, for the, um, the internal resistors. Uh, that just turns on the internal resistors. So... I don't actually have to put a resistor in on my circuit because it's already built into the Arduino chip. And then I begin my loop. I begin my logic. And basically, uh, this is just an if-else statement. Uh, I know it looks like a lot of code, and it took me a little bit developing it and um, talking with the, some members on the forum. But uh, it's really not very complicated. It's basically you're developing one logic, and then you're just continuing it over, over the course of all the switches. And you could keep going on for hundreds of switches. So basically what I'm saying is, it's taking a digital read on the switch and it's saying if the if that switch is low this being is low and uh, the current switch state is zero meaning that there's no other switches uh closed right now that that's the only one um asking for for water uh then i'm going to print in the serial monitor so i can see what's going on the water tank is low now it's going to write the the relay high it's going to turn the solenoid open and now it's going to print in this in the serial monitor the solenoid one is open it's going to create a delay time so I don't bounce. And then uh, it's going to write uh, K4 high, and that's going to turn the pump on. The K1 is, for again, for the solenoid, uh, and then obviously the uh, pilot light. Uh, and then also the pump and its uh, pilot light. And then it's going to say it's, it's uh, filling the water tank. 
and so I continue else if and then I'm keep going in the current switch uh, you know if it drives it high now I'm going to turn the pump off and it's going to do the same thing and then it's going to continue the tank two logic which is much of the same stuff and and basically by having this this um, logic it's never going to let one tank more than one tank fill at the same time everything's going to wait in line you can literally hold on to that switch two switches and as soon as you release one of them the other one's going to um, go and there's always a delay uh, between when the valve opens and when the pump starts so I don't hit I don't slam that valve even though the pressure isn't even high enough to do it I just I like to have a I like the fact that I had a, a delay on there so that's the Arduino code which I will publish and obviously with the schematics the detailed schematics for how I wired this uh, as well I'll publish those as well so there's a, a more in-depth review of the enclosure and the schematic and the mechanical components and how the overall the system works uh, I also said, and I mentioned earlier on, that I did have a lot of problems with it. Um, you know, normal normal debugging and um, Arduino and programming stuff comes up as it does with any system, part, regardless of the components that you're using uh, or the uh, programming environment that you're using. Uh, the problem, biggest problem I had was the fact that these were AC solenoids that I was switching, and they have such a high inductive load that they have a, a large flyback uh, effect. Uh, on the uh, upstream uh, s uh, system and I could not snub it. Uh, I, I literally could not control it. Normally if they were just a DC solenoid I just put a, a diode on it uh, so that it was only one direction and, and have no problems. Uh, AC solenoids are very difficult to work with uh, in this respect because of of the flyback that they cause when you're trying to, they don't like to be switched off basically. Uh, I never fully uh, was able to debug it, so uh, basically what was happening uh, was that uh, I was triggering other uh, valves. When uh, one was shut off, the other one would just flicker and either reset the Arduino altogether so fast that I couldn't see it, um, or it would cause a trigger on another output. Again, nothing really life-threatening, nothing crazy, but I still didn't feel comfortable with putting it there uh, because of the problems I had. Um, you know, that's it's always a debate. Is uh, you know, this system is very complicated compared to an, a manual switch. Basically, uh, I I would you, you, there's so many so much less possibility for something to go wrong with a manual switch and, and manual wiring and a proper junction box than this system right here. This makes your life easier, but there are a, you know a million more things that can go wrong as a result of it. Um, so the fact that it wasn't 100%. Um, and the fact that it was in Brazil and that I'm not always there, um, uh, if it was in my own house, I'd probably do it. Uh, just say, screw it. it it's, if, if something goes wrong, I'll fix it. But I can't be there all the time. And you're talking about domestic water system uh, and a commercial water system, which was driving the other tanks. So um, I ended up just uh, with a manual wiring solution uh, until maybe in the future when I can use an industrial PLC uh, and perhaps work with some higher quality DC solenoids. Uh, rather than some cheap sprinkler. Uh, it was a fun project. I learned a lot. Uh, it, it taught me a lot about this Arduino um, controller and programming environment uh, and some of the limitations of it. Uh, although I don't think that um, this has, is limited by any means for, for an application like this. I think you could probably run it 24 hours a day. I ran it for a long periods of time. I think it's a great controller. It's a cheap one. Um, it's great for to learn with. Uh, and to learn about programming logic and um, I, basic I.O. This project isn't out, outside of the reach of most people. Um, it, it's This is all attainable if you have a home solution that you're trying to do much of the same thing. I definitely recommend it. Uh, keep reading lots of books. There's uh, Make Books, uh, Arduino Books. Uh, check out on Amazon. There's a lot of really good reading material, and, and Arduino has an excellent environment um, uh, for helping each other. So I hopefully you guys enjoyed my video, uh, and hopefully this clears up a little bit more questions. If you have any questions, se você tem pergunta, eu falo português, pode mandar mensagem para mim. Um, feel free to send me a message, con comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm going to put up some more videos in the coming days and some tutorials on my other controls. And, um, and hopefully you guys liked it. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, talk to you guys soon.